Bo Nix is getting it done. What are you seeing out of him and Sean Payton that you think is potentially sustainable and even improvable, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I was there for the one loss, so I probably didn't have the best exposure up there uh, in the Charger game where he was kind of a little bit flummoxed early in that game. Again, the Chargers have number one scoring defense in the NFL, so that's part of it. Uh, and then later in that game, you saw him use his legs and, and kind of made it competitive. I haven't had a chance to watch this game uh, against Carolina, but, you know, he's got some, he's, you know, this sounds cliche, Rich. He's got like some of those kind of winner traits, though. He just ultra, ultra competitive, ultra tough. This is a defensive team uh, with outstanding personnel on the defensive side of the ball. They are, they are excellent on that side of the ball. And then he kind of gives them enough of the, you know, the playmaking ability to just go out and make a few plays, try not to, to turn the football over and you can win some ball games. Um, so they, they've, they've stumbled on a formula here. Um, I definitely think it still goes to the defense, uh, but Sean Payton really likes him. And, uh, and he's, you know, he's going to continue to build this thing and grow with him on that side of the ball, but they've, you know, they're going to need to continue to roster build on offense. All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Daily Broncos here. Today, we're going to be talking about Bo Nix and where the Broncos stand right now at five and three, eight weeks into the season. You know, Jeremiah is one of my favorite analysts in the game, and I appreciate him for admitting that he didn't see the performance against the Panthers. And you could tell that overall, he probably hasn't seen much of Denver and Nix entirely because, I mean, this was the best game of his career, man. You look at Bo Nix in the first seven weeks of the year, he got better each one. But week eight was truly when he broke out and showed everyone what he was truly capable of. And that's him being an absolute stud. We're talking about a guy who completed 28 of 37 passes at 75.7% for 284 yards, no turnovers, a 124.2 passer rating, and accounting for all four Broncos touchdowns, three passing, one rushing. You take a look at Knicks, he became the first Broncos quarterback since John Elway in 1996 to have multiple games with at least two passing touchdowns and a rushing score in the same season. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be John Elway, but what I am saying is that I'm very high on Knicks, and it was when he came into the draft out of Oregon. He also played at Auburn, so he played in the Pac-12. He played, of course, in the SEC. He has more college starts than anyone. He comes into the league, and sure, he wasn't the most ready-to-go player in the world, but he showed right away that he can make winning plays and that he has that Mamba mentality. That's exactly who Bo Nix has been his entire life, is just going out there and helping his team win games, and that's what he done this season, guys. I mean, going out there and, of course, getting those four touchdowns, having a 124.2 passer rating, no turnovers, 284 yards. This entire season, he's bought time with his legs and he's made his offensive line look better. That was one of my favorite things about Knicks when he was in school was he just didn't take sacks and he gets rid of the ball quickly. He doesn't hold on to it. Something that I hated about Russell Wilson in Denver is how many sacks he took and he just didn't get rid of the ball fast. But that hasn't been an issue for Knicks. So far through eight games, Knicks has 12 total touchdowns, eight passing, four rushing. Five interceptions, 1,530 yards passing, 63.5% completion, and 259 rushing yards. Now, those are good numbers. They're not great numbers, but he is a rookie on a Denver team that was one of the worst, if we're being honest, in football last year. I mean, Denver, they were in the playoff picture at one point, but they kind of fell off, and it was clear that they just needed a lot more talent. But this is just a much different team than it was last year, and I credit a lot of that to Bo Nix and how well he's played, guys. I mean, he's probably going to win rookie of the week. Jaden Daniels had a good game, but uh, I'm going to give the edge to Knicks because he had four touchdowns at Jaden's one. Although Daniels had more yards, but uh, you know, four touchdowns for a rookie is incredible with no turnovers, man. You just don't see that very often. And Knicks is starting to not even look like a rookie. You look at the past couple of the games, the one against the Saints, didn't really have to do too much, but still was good. Panthers game, Chargers game in that second half was incredible. Um, unfortunately, the first half was really, really bad, especially on third play of that game. He threw a pick, but the Raiders won. Knicks was good. So Jets game, he did just enough to buy his team the game. There's going to be times where like, he had 60 passing yards in that Jets game, but he still made the plays to find a way to win. And yes, Denver is built through their defense. There's no question about it. And it's not even a knock on the offense. It's more so of just there isn't that many weapons. Like Cortland Sutton, I really like. I think Devon Bailey's got potential. Marvin Mims Jr. But Trey Franklin's another guy that's got potential. But you know, potential is not really going to help you right now. It's going to flash at times. We've seen that throughout all of those players. They've made plays this year, but just not consistently. But I do think Denver needs a big time, whether it be a receiver or a tight end. There's just not many available. And you can kind of tell that Denver is very content with where they're at. They're not exactly all in on a Super Bowl. The Ravens and the Chiefs go get D-Hop. They go get, I'm looking at a, a Deontay Johnson. The Bills get 
Amari Cooper. I mean, th these top teams in the AFC are going out and getting big time names. Denver doesn't exactly have to do that because their goal is to just win 10 games. If they can go 10 and 7 and make the playoffs, that would be absolutely music to their ears. That's the goal, right? Of course, they want to win the division. They want to win the, the Super Bowl. They want to win it all. But they also have realistic expectations. And they have Bo Nix, who's you know, the first year of his rookie contract. All the other teams I named have quarterbacks on big contracts. So they go out there and they get rentals. And, and when, at one point in time, the Broncos will be there, but it's not exactly right now. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But the offensive line started to play better. Um, I think this defense is honestly the best in football, man. I mean, Zach Allen has to be a defensive uh, player of the year candidate. Patrick Sertan had a pick. He did give up a touchdown, but it was his first game in a couple of weeks. So there was clearly some rust. But, um, you know, also had a really good game that doesn't get enough love is uh, Jaquan McMillan, man. I mean, he's just been a stud all season, had a pick, his first pick of the year. But he's made big time plays for this Denver defense. Um, Riley Moss continues to play well. The linebackers, too, like Nick Benito, for example, had another sack. And uh, the, the record for Denver history, I believe, is 10 games in a row with a sack. And Benito, I mean, he has a chance to break that. Yeah, Von Miller did have a sack in six straight games in 2018, but it was Simon Fletcher did it in 10 straight games. It doesn't say in my notes the exact season he did that. But, yeah, Benito has the longest active streak in the NFL. Um, he took down Bryce Young, of course, in that game um, for six straight. So, I mean, to be able to do something that Von Miller did, uh, prime Von Miller in 2018, just shows how good this guy is. And he's so young, too. He's only getting better. Uh, just the defense entirely, man. You got to give Vance Joseph credit because not only does he have a great scheme, but he has players in his scheme that are able to maximize it. And it's just so dangerous. Another thing that I want to talk about that I didn't really talk about in my last video, I briefly mentioned it, was just opening up the playbook. I mean, the fake field goal, I mean, of course, it could have gone better, but we also did see a double pass that was great. Cortland Sutton's now three for three in his career passing. Uh, just being able to be creative is going to be crucial for the Broncos because, again, they don't have the best skill position players. So if they can make it difficult for opposing defenses to um, have to stop them, it's definitely going to be great for them, too, because Javante Williams, he was a guy who he didn't exactly have the best game overall against the Panthers. He goes out there 17 to 44. Williams had a great game against the Saints and then backtracked against the Panthers. But the passing game was great, too. So it's just eventually the Broncos, they want to get a complete balance of an offense to where Knicks is slinging it, giving you 250 to 280 a game. And then you're also able to go for over 100 rushing yards. But still, I mean, the, the passing game's working. Of course, you're going to go through it and you're going to play through that. Um, Sean Payton would know better than anyone. You know, Cortland Sutton had a great game, did lose a fumble, of course. The tight ends, uh, the Broncos had the worst tight end production coming into this week. And we saw early on that they were trying to fix that. So that's why I'm saying I think Denver should go out and try to get a tight end. There's plenty of teams that are not great in the standings right now, but they've got some big time tight ends that can help them now. Of course, you're not getting, you know, player on the level of like a Travis Kelsey or a Mark Andrews. But if you can get somebody solid who can just catch the ball, block, and help you win games, of course Denver should do it because at this point you're five and three, you're in the playoffs. Uh, why not buy, right? I don't think it has to be a crazy move, but oh uh, yeah, currently Denver is in the fifth playoff seed. So first Chiefs, two Texans, Texans, three Steelers, four Bills, five Broncos, six Ravens, Chargers at seven. Uh, we could see actually within actually the deadline's what, November 5th? So there's it's really around the corner as it's in like a week. So I would say, well, if the Broncos can go out there and beat the Ravens and the Chiefs or compete, then all of a sudden maybe their general manager would want to be a little bit more aggressive. But there's not really time to do that. But I mean, Denver doesn't really have to make a move because, again, they, they're just trying to make the playoffs. They're trying to make the wild card, even if they don't make the playoffs and they win eight, nine games. That's still a huge step in the right direction. They realize that this is a young team that is over. Um, really achieving right now. And a lot of that is the coaching staff. Denver has a great coaching staff. They've got Sean Payton and they've got Vince Joseph. So you got to give those guys a lot of credit. Denver's right now, they're 13th in the power rankings. So they're right ahead of the Bears and they're behind the Falcons and the Niners. I think that's pretty fair. Denver, their defense is elite. Their offense has a lot of work to do, though. They haven't consistently been able to uh, move the ball down the field this season. They've showed a lot of glimpses of it, right? Like the Bucks game, uh, the game against the Saints where they're running it, and then this game against the Panthers. But they haven't really done it consistently. So if they can go out there and put up points against the Ravens and the Chiefs, I mean, the, uh, the Ravens defense isn't really that good, if I'm being honest, but the Chiefs defense is elite. So but just it's going to be a huge test, man. It's a huge test coming up for Denver, man. Um, and I can't wait, too, because – yeah, it's nice beating the Saints and the Panthers, but you've got to go out there and beat playoff teams. And we'll see if Denver can do that, guys. Peace.